Okay, so time for part three, and I've only got three questions to answer. So let's get started. First question is from Jordan Epstein. If for some reason I don't eat enough during the day and I'm going to beg soon, is it good to stuff my face so I hit my macro goal or just sleep and make sure I make it tomorrow? Um, basically, I would say in short, no. Um, don't stuff your face to hit your macro goal. Um, you just you're never getting the. It's never the best way to take nutrition just to stuff it all in, especially just before you go to bed. Because it's just not good to eat before you go to bed. Um, so basically, if you don't meet those macro goals, just, you know, try to make them the next day. Um, you're not going to die if you don't get your, you know, your daily 15 kilograms of protein. You know, um, you'll live. So I mean, if you've really not eaten a lot, if you've really, really badly, you know, eaten like one meal, then before you go to bed, you're going to eat something small just because you'll be waking up with low blood sugar and uh, yeah you know play it sensible the next question is another from Marco Benjamin uh, how do you how do you feel what do you think about human growth hormone um, as someone who is five foot seven I wish I'd produced a little more of it when I was in my mid-teens um, as for a supplement is hormone growth is human growth hormone even legal in like most countries? I don't know. Um, I've heard it's legal in some situations, uh, and at least in very weak forms. Um, and I think you can buy it here, um, but I don't think you can buy it in any amount which is really worth taking. And I don't think it is worth taking. Um, your body will produce it naturally if you're doing the exercises correctly and you're doing exercises of a good intensity and of a good. Um, the right exercise, I mean things like, I think even high intensity exercises are supposed to stimulate HGH um, but in truth, yeah, just just don't worry about it, leave that to your body um, your body will take care of that you know, if if you're a hard gamer there's probably reasons beyond human growth hormone why that's happening so, in short, uh, what I feel about human growth hormone don't take it, or buy it, or waste your money on it and the next question is from Suraj Mamed, Mamed, Mamad how can one split down workout goals? Uh, example, instead of getting in shape, um, more specific, and how can that goal be reached? Uh, a popular one in therapy groups, fitness groups, anything, is we use uh, SMART goals, and that stands for something that I've forgotten. So, but in general, uh, the basic idea is we aim for realistic goals uh, in a realistic time frame and for a realistic um, amount. And the best way to judge that, rather than just getting in shape, is really, that can be your overall goal, like a big end goal is good. I mean, if your overall goal is to get strong, or, you know, be slimmer, fitter, whatever that is, then, yeah, that's a good goal to have. It's a good basis and a good foundation, and a good sort of overarching um, plan. But for the short term, and what you'll be working on like each workout then you're going to want small uh, attainable goals and if you're for instance trying to get better general like aerobic fitness then you want to set a goal that says you know um, I'm doing the speeds are all going to be terrible but you know if you're on an exercise bike you'll say I'm doing you know two kilometers at you know, 20 miles an hour um, and I want to do two kilometers in the same time, in um, not the same time, sorry, I want to do more kilometers in the same time, um, so you up your speed by you know like a few miles an hour. But what I'm trying to say is, you you try and pick something in a realistic time frame. So I want to achieve something like a, an increase in speed, an increase in strength that is realistic that you could achieve in the time scale you set. So it might be like I'm bicep curling 10 kilograms. Um, I want to be bicep curling 15 kilograms in two weeks. Um, and you aim for that, and then when you hit that, you know you'll make some new go uh, smart goals. And and the sort of the idea behind that is, um, you know, you're splitting it down and saying you're getting results, and you can easily judge your progress. If you pick something like get stronger, 
or lose weight, then over the you know that's a that's a project of years, and after the years, it can start to get a little bit blurred the lines, and it can be hard to tell your progress. With smart goals, you're able to directly see how you're progressing. You can see whether you're in stronger or you can see whether you're being slimmer or fitter or you know if your line capacity is improving whatever it is you're trying to achieve then splitting it down is a good way to do that and hopefully how I explained that wasn't too confusing um, but that's how I'd recommend it um, that's how I'd recommend splitting it down finding a point that you want to reach and picking a time to do it that you believe is realistic and that's it for the questions um, thanks for sending them in uh, that took slightly longer than I thought. I was a bit less brief than I intended. Um, so I've almost told with about 25 minutes of video. Uh, it's going to take some time to upload these, so I expect that all three of these parts won't have aired on the same day. So, but thanks, I will do this again at some point. Um, maybe in a week or two I will open the questions again. And if you have any questions regarding the things I've said in this video, then let me know in the comments wherever this is posted, probably the group, and I will try to address them in more detail there. Uh, thank you very much.